Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video. Today I'm going to show you how to spot a fake Lamy Dialog 3 fountain pen. Step one, is it under $100? Then it's a fake. Hmm, this video is so short I should have put it on TikTok. That was easy. Of course there's more to the story than just the price, but this is the biggest tell of them all. If you see a store closeout sale on Facebook where Mont Blanc pens are going for $99 US and it seems too good to be true, it is. Back in February, I pulled the trigger on a third Lamy fountain pen, the Lamy Dialog CC, in rich navy blue with gold hardware. The Dialog 3 seemed a bit chunky to me, and I was drawn to the minimalist and slimmer look of the Dialog CC. The same day, I bought this Lamy Dialog 3 on AliExpress for 40 bucks. I was hoping to do a side-by-side -side review illustrating the differences between a real Lamy and a fake Lamy, I'm going to call them Lamy's, but the real Lamy of Heidelberg, Germany is currently having supply chain issues and I'm still waiting on my pen ordered on February 9th. Of course, the retailer on AliExpress never called this pen a Lamy Dialog 3. They called it a Wakaka Red Dot Design Award Dialog Focus 3 fountain pen, black titanium 14K gold tip nib ink retractable pens. Hmm. In short, it's a fake and they don't want to be sued. But they were correct. This pen is pure Wakaka, all right? Let me show you what a $40 fake looks like and what to look for in a fake Lamy right now. So Chinese pen resellers, especially from shops on AliExpress, uh, seem to be bypassing Canada Post and sending things directly to local couriers to be delivered. Slap another label over top of the original tracking number and uh, I lose track of what it is. I've got a pretty good idea what this is, and let's open it up and see if I'm right. Here we are. It's in paper. And there it is. This is a Chinese knockoff of the Lamy Dialogue. I think it's the Dialog 3, and it says Lamy on it as well. So this is not a, a clone. This would be considered a fake because they're actually using the Lamy logo on here and selling it as if it is a Lamy. It is not. And we'll see whether it's worth it ethically or financially or otherwise to buy a Lamy fake. So this won't be a normal review as I'm going to point out the parts and features of this fountain pen, but focus, pardon the pun. <laughs> Forgive the pun. <laughs> what pun? Shut up, he thinks he's witty. On the ways you can tell the pen is counterfeit. Then I will show some size comparisons, do a writing sample and talk about what I don't like about this pen. And spoiler alert, there are no likes for this pen. I cut the unboxing, well, unpapering, short, as I wanted to reveal this pen's shortcomings and ham-fisted attempt at forgery in some detail here. Let's start with the first impression when I unrolled it from its paper. Lamy doesn't sell its pens in bubble wrap or wrapped in pieces of tissue paper. Lamy is one of the best pen companies for packaging, especially in higher-end pens. And no, this is not the box the fake Lamy came in. This is the box for my Lamy Studio Palladium. If your Lamy Dialog 3 didn't come in a box similar to this, then it's a fake. Fake. Even a Lamy Safari box is better than tissue paper. But if the price and the lack of packaging still have you unsure, let's talk about first impressions. Now, I'm far-sighted and I need reading glasses close up. But even without my fake eyes on, I can tell that this is a fake pen. The engraving on the gold lines and Lamy logo here are fuzzy even with 2020 eyesight. Lamy is the switch watch of the fountain pen industry, renowned for its flawlessly perfect engineering and attention to the smallest detail. Whether you're a fan of Lamy or not, there's no denying that the company is a stickler for precision. 
So close up, these lines look like they were measured with a micrometer, marked with chalk, and etched with a chisel and hammer. Lamy would never allow their famous logo to look like this. Whatever white metal this is made from is obviously powder coated in white enamel paint and then quickly laser etched to the point that the laser spits out chunks of enamel when it passed. And here is what a Lamy logo looks like compared to this. This is the Lamy Studio Palladium model on the top and that is precision engineering. That is not. And I shouldn't be able to feel the etching on these lines and logo either, which I can. From the top, we see the ball-shaped garage door opening for the nib, surrounded by a black plastic bezel. The front half of the body curves up quickly and then is straight for the length of the cigar tube-shaped pen until the rounded end. And here we have the anodized aluminum clip. Lamy advertises the Dialog 3 as, quote, the first retractable nib and clip pen. When you turn the back half of the pen body, the nib extends, but also that clip is supposed to retract and be flush with the body. Well, this clip is already flush with the body as it's affixed to the body. You can see that the clip has a slightly springy nature to it, but there's no retracting feature fake also fake and even before we turn the body to see how the retractable nib works the amount of play and movement here is suspect of some shoddy engineering those lines are supposed to line up precisely and not wiggle like that and also what's this i see here glue residue very nice one of the reasons lammy puts these lines on the top of the pen is to show how precisely the pen lines up not here before I turn this barrel and extend the nib for you, I'm going to place my microphone next to it so you can hear the mechanism at work. Because one of the hallmarks of great German engineering is how smooth mechanisms work. And you know a Lamy engineered pen will be silent in its operation. Crunch, 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 crunch. Ah, the telltale sign of a Chinese fake. And you can see that the round garage door comes down in a jerky, clicky kind of way. That's a technical term, by the way, jerky, clicky. And the nib extends with a number of starts and stops to it and crunches. It feels like it's catching in there, that mechanism, somewhere. And let's take a closer look at this nib. How can we tell that this is a fake nib? Well, there are a number of visual clues to tell that this is a fake but the best way when it says 14K585 gold is to put a magnet on it. Look at that. Not gold. Fake. Fake. So when a magnet sticks to the nib like this, ipso fatso, it's steel, not gold. QED. Overworking, overeating, ipso fatso, and overhonest. The first thing I noticed is how horribly skewed that gold strip is down the center of the nib. Couldn't be on any more off-center if they tried. Certainly flares my OCD, QED. So let's look at a real Lamy 14 karat gold nib and the fake one side by side. The Lamy is on the left and the Lamy is on the right. The Lamy laser etching is precise and lined up correctly and evenly. The Lamy is light and the fonts are all over the place, leaning left and right. The Lamy Z50 nibs are interchangeable on many models of Lamy fountain pens. You can take this 14 karat gold nib here on this Lamy Studio and put it on this Safari and vice versa, whatever you want to do. The easiest way actually to get a Lamy Z50 nib off a pen is to use some scotch tape on the nib and then pull laterally. So get some scotch tape, put it on the nib just like that and then pull and it comes right off. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So I did this with this lamey nib and tried to replace it with a real gold nib, but it won't fit. So there's another tell that this is a fake. <laughs> oh, these newfangled machines, fake. Okay, now let's take the pen apart and look at the guts. If you retract the nib and keep turning, Counterclockwise, the pen will unscrew, and we have the back half of the barrel 
and the nib unit. Immediately, I'm struck by the sloppy play in this unit. Look at this. It moves all over the place, even though it's screwed in tight. It even rattles. I would say that would be totally impossible for a real Lamy. And the knurling on the end of the nib unit feels almost smooth, where I expect it to be rough. I mean, that's the point of a knurled knob, isn't it? For it to be a little rough. But let's pull the converter and check it with a real Lamy converter. So first thing to notice is that the collar on the real Lamy Z27 is satin, not chrome. The Lamy logo on the knob on the real Lamy is precisely cut, where it's a little bit fat and blurry on the copy. The Germany on the German converter is very, very precise, where it's a little bit sloppy and fat on the Chinese copy. And the nipple end of the converter on the German converter is rounded, where it's square edged cut off on the copy. And even before we unscrew the nib unit from the front half of the pen, we notice this metal edge right here is very, very sharp. In fact, all of these metal edges are sharp. We unscrew the nib unit and we notice that the edge of the collar on the front here is also very, very sharp. Now let's look at the nib unit. It's a very thin, sharp edged piece of extruded aluminum and all these edges are sharp. I don't have a Lamy Dialog 3 to compare this to, but I expect uh, the real one won't be this flimsy and sharp. The nib unit is compatible with Lamy cartridges and a real Lamy Z27 converter, however. I'll put the pen back together again, and then we'll see one of the reasons you might actually consider buying one of these fakes. So how does the actual Lamy Dialog 3 feel in the hand? Well, it feels like writing with a breadstick or a piece of sidewalk chalk. It isn't ergonomic at all, which is what I suspected in the first place. And I was never interested in getting a Lamy Dialog 3. And unless you can actually hold one of these pens at a brick and mortar retailer, the only way you might be able to tell if the pen might be comfortable for you might be to spend $40 for the fake. I would recommend against that, however, as I have a much cheaper solution. Go to Home Depot and buy a piece of Schedule 40 PVC pipe that is one half inch in diameter and cut off a piece that is five and one half inches long and hold that for a while. You can even add some weight to it until it weighs 47 grams, which is the weight of a genuine Dialog 3. The retail price for a genuine Dialog 3 is a whopping $320 US. So the $40 US price tag on the fake might be tempting, but I assure you it's not a bargain. This is an awful, slipshod, sloppily engineered fake that won't impress anyone, and it's a total waste of 40 bucks. I bought this pen on AliExpress for $39.05 US, and it was worth the price for me, just to bring this kind of crap to the attention of inquiring minds. These AliExpress shops sell fake Mont Blancs as well. There are all kinds of Mont Blancs called variously MB, Wakaka, and Monty. So if you want the full Monty, you have to pay 40 bucks. This pen kind of looks like a full Monty and it comes in white and black. So you'll see the Wakaka Starwalker, the Monty JFK, and the MB149. The video demonstration of the MB149 piston filler is a laugh in itself as you can watch some dude in white gloves, no it's not Yoast, demonstrating how the piston opens. Then he closes it again and puts the pen in the ink but doesn't submerge the nib in the ink and proceeds to open the piston again, sucking up zero ink, of course. Very funny. And that pen is about 40 bucks. They don't show you a close-up of the nib, but it's clear it has Mont Blanc 4870 on it. And there is a close-up of the word Germany on the clip ring. Let me know in the description if you think I should buy one of these to examine it in a video like this. Would that be of value to viewers? Or is just saying buying these obvious fakes is a bad idea and a total waste of money enough? Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the fake Lamy Dialog 3 with a Moon Pilot A1 vanishing point, a Ranga 3C, a Lamy Studio Palladium, and a Lamy Safari for scale. 
and since the vanishing point and the dialogue do not have anything to post, we'll just show them all unposted. And here they are unposted. I call this the Moon Pilot A1 vanishing point because it's a hybrid. The outside of the pen is a Magon A1, and the nib unit and guts of the pen are a genuine Pilot Vanishing Point 18 karat gold black 1.0 stub. It's a lovely pen, actually. Now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the fake Lamy Dialogue 2. Sorry, Dialogue 3. Of course, the retailer calls it a focus. I don't know why. And it has an extra fine 14 karat gold steel nib. Ha ha. I tried to ink this fake Lamy with some genuine Lamy turquoise ink, but the ink immediately leapt out of the converter and back into the bottle again. Well, do you last. <laughs> So the ink today is Ferris Wheel Press Jelly Bean Blue. The Ferris Wheel Press inks have the opposite effect. They leap right out of this tippy little bottle and into your lap without touching pen or paper. And that's why I invented this 3D printed ink buddy stabilizer for the notoriously tippy Ferris Wheel Press 38 milliliter bottle. I think these bottles from Ferris Wheel Press were invented by the guy who invented Weebles. And you can get these ink buddy stabilizers for Ferris Wheel Press, Noodlers, uh, Robert Oster bottles, and ink samples as well on my son's Etsy channel. Allied Armorers. I'll put a link in the description. So let's check the wetness. This nib is extremely wet for an extra fine nib, especially an extra fine Chinese nib. Here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. Now as to line variation, I'm not going to do that today uh, because I've done it and I was surprised at how much bounce and line variation there was with this nib uh, when I tried the squiggle and putting a little pressure on the nib. But then after doing the squiggle, the nib went from a 0.4 millimeter line to a fire hose at 0.6 millimeters. I examined the nib and noticed that not only had the tines spread wide, the nib had bent up slightly from the feed. And I didn't put a lot of pressure on that nib either. An hour later, and some very inky fingers, I was able to get the nib back to where it was writing before, which is a 0 0.4 millimeter line, which is a Western Extra Fine, or a Japanese Fine. So this is some very thin steel from which they've made this nib. A soft nib will flex and then return, like a flexy nib will return. A thin metal nib will flex and stay flexed. Not good. But the nib is extremely smooth with some pencil-like feedback. And I was surprised because it's such a, a fine nib to be that smooth. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing, it's very scratchy, very thin, but it's actually doing it. Very scratchy. And some quick writing.
no issues whatsoever. This is a very juicy nib. So what do I like and what do I not like so much about this fountain pen? I was all prepared to eviscerate this pen. See, I know nothing. I'm going to send you to a vivisectionist. <laughs> Until I wrote with it for the first time. I'm no fan of very fine nibs, especially Chinese extra fine nibs. But this one surprised me because I wasn't expecting it to be a pleasant experience or even to actually write. Not only does it write, it's very smooth and wet and just glides across the page. I'm very surprised that I like it at all, other than the fact that don't push it because the nib is very, very thin metal and it's very susceptible to springing on you. But it's too bad that it's in a horrible pen. And not just horrible because it's fake, but horrible because even if it were a genuine Lamy Dialogue 3, I think I'd hate it. The pen isn't that far off in size um, or shape or weight, uh, so the experience with the real Dialogue 3 won't be that dissimilar to this, and I don't like it. It's like writing with a stick. Help! Somebody do something! Ah! This stick is on fire! I'm really hoping that my Lamy Dialogue CC, expected to arrive any millennium now, will not feel as awful as this pen does in my hand. But let's trash the fake and I'll leave the trashing of the Lamy to another day sometime in the distant future. This $40 fake isn't worth 40 bucks, folks. Seriously, it isn't worth 10 bucks. Shoddy manufacturing, cheap materials, sharp edges, crunchy mechanism, and just plain embarrassing to own. You whip this stick out at a meeting and you'll be faced with comments like, what the hell? and you'll be quickly stuffing it back in your jeans. Don't buy it. It won't pass inspection by a 12 year old with a Crayola. If you want to know how it feels to write with a genuine Lamy Dialogue 3, just try writing your signature with your garden hose. And there you have it. Let me know if you want to see me waste my hard earned YouTube bucks on another fake for a future video in the comments below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel now too for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis and badges. Plus now I'm providing unboxing videos as I get new pens exclusively from members only. And that just leaves it for me to say Thank you for watching and that's all she wrote. Crunch. I made this. <laughs>